everybody wants to know what is the thing to plant in food plots. The truth is there isn't one thing. Whitetail's nutritional needs change over the course of the year. You know, it gets into spring and summer, and that protein is so important. So, let's go ahead and put in a strip of Antler King Trophy Clover around the outer edge of the plot when you're talking about a decent sized plot like this. Why? Well, right off the bat, you've got these trees. They're casting shade, and at the same time, their root system is sucking all sorts of moisture out of the ground. That makes this edge strip very poor for going ahead and trying to plant corn, soybeans, honey hole, brassicas, so on. Now, but clover does quite well in this. So now we have a nice little buffer of clover around the plot. And then let's go ahead and let's put our honey crop in the middle. Now, in this case, these are actually soybeans. Soybeans that were planted two years ago. It were, they were planted extra thick. When you're planting soybeans for deer in relatively small, uh, relatively small plots, overplant. I almost always plant between 125 to, in some situations, as high as 200% as much as we are supposed to plant. Now, why? I'm banking on the deer coming in here and doing an awful lot of thinning. All right. So, by planting extra heavy, you end up, you're able to cheat a little bit more production out of your acreage. All right. But this is actually soybeans out here that are actually from two years ago. The deer didn't hit them very hard that year, so all we did is come in in the spring with a, with a bush hog and mow them. Mow them, cast those soybeans onto the ground all over, and bingo, we got ourselves a great stand of soybeans. Okay, then let's go ahead and let's top seed it with a combination of fall, winter, spring, which is a cereal rye. Let's go three parts that and lights out oats. Okay, so now we have the trophy clover, we have the soybeans, we have the cereal rye, we have oats. We have all these things working in our favor, so let's take it another step now and let's go ahead and edge feather. Edge feathering is doing nothing more than hinge cutting the trees in approximately a five yard wide band along the edge of an opening or a food plot. Okay. By doing that, by hinge cutting them, what you're doing is you're going ahead and you're taking the tree lean. The tree is leaning this way. I'm going to cut through the back side here until it drops down, retaining that connection with the root system. Food and water goes from the tops to the roots and vice versa. You know, through the bark. Okay. If we can leave a percentage of that bark attached, those trees continue to live. If they continue to live, all of a sudden all that leafy growth is down at ground level for deer. So we just went ahead and kicked that browse level through the roof between leafy growth and then over winter buds. And at the same time, we just opened up a little bit more of the edge to sunlight. We opened up what was forest floor to sunlight, promoting extra growth in our food plot and promoting extra growth in that five yard wide swat. So now, just that fast, we have clover, we have soybeans, we have cereal rye, we have oats, and we have all of this natural browse that nature produces down at a level that deer can get to. There's a bunch of stuff we can do later to accessorize the plot. But by just doing those things there, now we have offered the deer a smorgasbord. By offering them a smorgasbord, they tend to come to the same locations to feed day after day throughout the entire year. They tend to a lot more than if I just had soybeans out here. If I just had soybeans out here, it would be a one-time glorious window. But Either side of that, not so great. Offer them everything that they could want in one spot, and you're going to have so much more feeding activity occurring there. When it comes to what to plant for food plots, don't look at it as what is that one best seed? 
What you want to do is you want to offer a smorgasbord. By offering trophy clover, fall, winter, spring, lights out oat, soybeans, edge feathers with buds and grasses and weeds, all of a sudden we are offering all sorts of things. One quick note on the edge feathering, always follow all chainsaw safety rules. I'm going to personally advise that you hire professionals to do it. Never, ever, ever cut a tree that you do not feel comfortable cutting. And obviously never, ever cut dead trees. They're called widow makers by loggers for a really good reason.